I would like to welcome you to our web seminar today on, as you see, significant changes in the seismic design provisions of ASCE 722. Uh, this is going to be part two of four parts that we are planning. Today we will talk about chapter 12, which is on building design as opposed to the design of uh, non-building structures or non-structural components. We will talk about changes from the previous edition dated AC7, not dated, the previous edition which was AC716 to the current edition which is ACE722. Uh, I did mention the last time and, and it is important to point out that ACE 722 is adopted by the 24 IBC which has been out for a while. Uh, adoption uh, is happening. Uh, the big adoption in California will be effective on January 1, 2026. So it, it is a, a year and a couple of months away, but the, as I mentioned the last time, the changes are so numerous and, and some of them are so important that it is not too soon to try to and to understand uh, the new ways you may have to do things. Okay. So chapter 12, Seismic Design Requirements for Building Structures, that's the official title of the chapter. And I will start with a change that is, I think, uh, very good news. And, and, and this took a lot of time and effort. So the change has to do with coupled shear walls, which I have found the, the term itself is not all that widely understood. So, so let me start there. A, a, a coupled shear wall is typically two walls connected at every floor level by uh, beams. The, there, there can be more than two walls and, and more than one set of beams, but, but let's talk about two walls connected by one set of beams. The beams are at every floor level and they are typically above the door and the window openings. Now, if a coupled wall like that is subject to lateral forces due to wind or earthquakes or whatever as shown in the picture much of the well the the uh, <clears throat> overturning will cause tension in one of the walls and compression in the other wall and the couple due to the tension and the compression will counteract much of the overturning moment leaving only the remainder of the overturning moment to be resisted by uh, the two shear wall segments. Okay. So by uh, proper design where we make the coupling beams, uh, let us say, kind of weak, we can absorb a lot of earthquake energy or, or we can absorb damage that may be caused by an earthquake in the coupling beams, sparing the shear walls from damage well into the earthquake excitation. So th that, that makes this system pretty attractive in uh, seismic applications and in uh, at least in uh, <clears throat> Japan and New Zealand, uh, these uh, systems are treated more favorably than isolated walls. We hadn't gone there until AC 716, but now uh, that has changed. So this is a real life example. This is a building in the Seattle area 
Perry Kapsinski office gave me the, the picture. Obviously, <clears throat> three shear walls with two sets of coupling beams. Uh, when we uh, thought that ACE7 table 12.2-1 should have uh, explicit uh, roles on coupled shear wall systems, uh, it, it became pretty obvious that we do not have a definition for a coupled wall system. We also realized that we were not talking about any coupled wall system. We are talking about, if we are talking about high seismic applications, it has to be a ductile coupled wall system. The shear walls that are coupled must be ductile, meaning they have to be special shear walls as detailed by ACI 318 requirements. And the coupling beams also have to be specially detailed as required by Chapter 18 of ACI 318. 